Yes, I do think girls should try different building crafts when they're at school, as when they're older they don't get the chance, so they might as well take the chance when they're young. And also, it's always boys that are doing it. Um, I don't feel as restricted as I would if I was working in an office. And I like doing things with my hands. I mean, it just feels, you know, a bit more creative than an office job, for example. If you're working through the winter, like uh, we have been doing on the outside of the building, it can get a bit parky, you know. You're, you're uh, getting frozen toes and fingers quite quickly. I think it's really great now that women are going into building sites, working, doing different jobs. Before they'd never, possibly never have a chance to. People wouldn't think they were capable, but now people begin to see different, realise that they can do the jobs just as well as any men. The course we are doing at Vauxhall College is a plumbing link course and we come here every Wednesday and we do all different sort of cutting pipes and shaping them and most things that do with plumbing. Well I like the plumbing course because it's, it's new, it's interesting, we haven't done it before, a lot of the work it entails, we haven't, you know, we've never used many of the tools before. It's quite interesting doing it. There were quite a few girls who wanted to do this course about three times the amount who could actually go on the course who wanted to do it. So it was only about 12 of us who actually did get on the course. The man who takes us here, he came to the school and he told the teachers about it and the teachers told us and we filled in forms and enrolled and that's how we've come to start the course here. They couldn't really understand it because they all wanted things like art college uh, positions and work in offices and be nurses and that. And they couldn't really understand me wanting to do that. I thought it was a bit mad. My friends did not think a lot about me coming into civil engineering. They were mostly interested in what is civil engineering and what do you have to do in civil engineering. When I first went home and said I was going to do plumbing, everybody was quite surprised, shocked, had a bit of a joke. And now they sort of say that, well, at least I can help fix the pipes or anything if anything goes wrong. So everybody's quite pleased with me. Well, my mum and dad really wanted me to be sort of what they thought was successful, but their idea of successful, nothing about what I wanted to do. At first they was laughing, like they thought it was a big joke, but now... I've stuck it for quite a few months, so I think I'm serious now. And they don't care, they think it's good, at least I've got a job. Well, my parents thought it's my life, so I can do what I like with it. Planning technician aids the professional planner in their job and this work can vary from drawing and sketch work right up to survey and site visit work. I think that the work of a planning technician can be suited to either a man or a woman as long as they are suited to the job itself. The Thamesmead survey that I carried out had to be done because there was a new road being built. Um, I had to complete a map to show all the residential um, buildings in the vicinity so that if there are any claims against the GLC for noise pollution, there's a reference for the committee to go to. I enjoy my job because of the variation that it offers you. It means that every day you're doing something different and that means a lot more to me than sitting in an office doing the same thing day after day.
My future plans at the moment are to continue the tech course and then take a high tech course in town and country planning. After that I may decide to carry on and gain a professional qualification or a degree in town planning. What I like about my job is the fact that different soil presents different problems and it's very interesting to see, record and watch the behaviour of soils. My job at the moment entails the testing of soil for civil engineering purposes and you need to test soil for civil engineering purposes in order to design foundation to suit the many factors of the soil. For instance, the sheer strength of the soil, the swelling of the soil, or the compressibility of the soil. I normally do about 12 laboratory tests. The purpose of the tests are to determine the liquid limit, plastic limit, and the plasticity index. Also to determine the rate of settlement of the soil. My future plans at the moment is to continue working and to further my studies at the same time. I might do a higher tech certificate or I might do a BSc, which will make me a qualified civil engineer. I would suggest to other women wanting to do civil engineering as a career to do physical science, science subjects, technical drawing and maths. But it's no problem if you haven't got maths, because I didn't, and you can still make it without all level maths. I didn't do woodwork, metalwork or technical drawing at school, or the sciences. Woodwork, metalwork, technical drawing aren't really a problem. Um, the physical sciences I would have liked to have done would be useful to me now. I like the combination of the maths and the arts and also the, the great satisfaction you feel when you actually see a building that you've had something to do with being built and you see it finished, it's, it's a very nice feeling. just that there is one extra one. I, I don't know, well obviously the loading in that beam is just that it's bit more just than a it bit is more, elsewhere. Yeah, when I go on site I have to make sure that everything that is shown on our drawings, and, uh, all the steel bars, are actually placed as shown on there. And um, that the same amount as shown on the drawings are in fact actually put into the slabs or the beams or columns. And make sure that the laps are accurately placed. A civil en engineering technician works underneath a project engineer, um, producing calculations, um, working drawings sometimes, and uh, visiting sites, checking on the work in hand, and visiting site, uh, going to site meetings and things like that. Uh, also administrative work. Well, I uh, produce working drawings, whether they be um, general arrangement drawings for setting out or um, detailed drawings of either reinforced concrete or steel work for construction on site. The sort of training I'm doing is a tech certificate, and now a higher tech certificate, which is um, units that you build up over the years, and you get the certificate at the end of it. I don't think wood machining is a heavy job for a woman. I think that the thing that it most requires is liking a sense of perfection, working to a fine line. 
And that's why I think it's a trade that would really appeal to a lot of women. I like wood machining because it basically extends all the skills that I've accumulated over the, fi over the last five years, but it does it in a way that I know I can be totally accurate about every line and every cut I want because once I've set the machines up they will produce what I've set up and after that it comes down to your ingenuity you can take that skill as far as you like because on a joinery level there's some things that I'll never do as well as a machine would do a machine will work accurately to, to a thousandth of an inch you know it's just perfection and I want to be able to use those machines safely and have enough control over them to do anything I'd like to do. Because really, with the machines, as you can see in this workshop, I can actually build anything. I mean, the sky's the limit. I don't like having to continually tell the boys, yes, I can do it. I know I can do it, but I find it very hard when they say to me all the time, you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. And that inevitably does build up a feeling of your own self-image in that work situation. People tell you you can't do something. It's amazing what it does to you. It actually, the psychology of that works really well. You end up not being able to do something that in the past you've known you've been able to do quite easily. You know, you get all the same old things about the, the, the men thinking that you can't do the job or thinking that because you're a woman they have to help you. Because there's this big thing that, that says, well, you know, if you're working on a building site, a bricklayer, you've got to be able to lift the old bags of cement or you've got to be able to throw these scaffolding boards about like nothing on earth. The men get up my nose sometimes. Their general attitude to the women on the site, well, I mean, their attitude to women, full stop, really. Um, but that's something you can learn to live with. I have to deal with a lot of sexist jokes and remarks. And it goes against the grain, but I have to ignore them because I have a job to do, and if I start, complaining about the remarks, then I won't get the job done. The firm I work for carries out medium to small contracts. The largest contract we might do would be about three quarters of a million, and we'll go down to contracts of a size of about £20,000, both office, factory and domestic. My job entails being given the administrative side of a contract to look after. Hello, it's William Green's here. It's, it's Sue Lawrence, William Green's here. I'd like to place an order, please. Um, For example, if there's perhaps a refurbishment of five flats going on, I'll look after that, do the organisation, the ordering, some pricing, taking off quantities running through from estimating to invoicing and making sure everything goes smoothly. Right, thanks very much. Bye. When I finished my tech course, if I wanted to, I could progress to the Chartered Institute of Building Exams, which is a three-year course. I haven't yet decided if that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give it consideration over the next year or so. There are a number of problems that I have experienced because I'm a woman uh, doing this job and a lot of it has been to do with the fact of getting the men used to the, the idea that they don't have to sort of carry me bucket for me and uh, treating you a bit like a half wit in terms of showing you how to carry out the job because I know I can do it as well as any of the blokes and I don't need all that. At the moment, I work for, really, I suppose, I work for a community group. They set themselves up to, to do up this, the building, to uh, open it as a community centre. I felt that bricklaying 
uh, taught me a lot about the whole thing about building, that I'd have to learn about how you can put a building together, how you can build a house, for example. Um, and you have to know all the other crafts in a way. You have to know where all the services go, the plumbing and the electrics and the carpentry. And it gives you a good overall knowledge. I guess that because unemployment's rising really every day, you know, and more and more people are being thrown out of work, that there's going to be uh, lots of um, very skilled bricklayers that have had lots of uh, training and, and, and lots of experience on sites that are going to be uh, really looking for jobs and, and obviously desperate for jobs. And um, somebody like me who's coming along to get a job at the same time as them, it's going to be, I think, very hard from that point of view. Uh, health and safety, as far as this site is concerned, well, the workers have decided that really that's very important. I mean, we realised quite early on, I think, that uh, like building sites especially have quite a high accident rate, and there's a lot of people die on building sites, you know, throughout the country every year. Um, part of the way we, we dealt with that was, well, we joined the union, and through the union we can appoint ourselves a health and safety rep, which we have done. And she's gone off to do a health and safety course, so that means she can come onto the site and know the sort of problems to look out for, and, and we can then do something about them. Well, I did find uh, that I was more isolated in the site that I worked on before, because I was the only woman. And uh, I've been really lucky in, in that there are a number of other women working on the site. Uh, the sort of work I've been doing it varies from month to month. Um, first of all, I was just doing general labouring, which is like knocking down walls, digging holes. And then after that, I was doing plumbing for two months, which was water and gas, which was really good. Um, I've done some carpentry, a bit of brick laying, pointing, painting, all kinds of things. It's not typical building work that we're doing here. It's something like shop fitting, what we're doing at the moment. Um, fitting out a building for the use of the people that need it. I like it because when you've finished the job, there it is, you can see what you've done. You know, you hung that door, or you put up those shelves, and um, it's a bit different from um, just putting paper around on a desk. <laughs> I trained um, under the government top scheme to start with for six months and then I did a city and guilds course on day release at the local building college for three years and I took the craft uh, certificate and then the advanced grant. I worked with a local authority and then I decided to become self-employed and it has given me the opportunity to work with other women and when I worked for the council I was always the only woman amongst about 300 men. <laughs> The advantages of being self-employed for me really are that you can determine what work you do, you can determine your own hours of work, and you just have more control over your work situation. Uh, you can also choose who you work with. The disadvantages of being self-employed um, are more to do with the organisation of the work, having to um, go and do estimates, um, not know whether you're going to get the job, um, and and therefore, in a way, be constantly uncertain as to what work you're going to be doing in two months' time. I think it's better if you're self-employed because um, you're working by yourself and no one's telling you what to do all the time. I hope to start my own business when I'm qualified, you know, as a paint and decorator. I hope to start my own painting business. The friends I see now, they are mostly in offices now. There's some that go to art college and that, but there's nobody that does the same thing as me. But I was really lucky because it was the first thing I tried for, and I got through the two tests all right, and I got through the interview all right, and that was it, I just got the job. I always had the, the thought that I wanted to do something practical. I didn't want to do office work. 
Yeah, well, I think you need to have a good sense of humour, have patience with people, and just generally get along with people. Well, I like the uh, the different jobs you do and the different places you go to work. That's what I really like about it. What I dislike about the job is that you have the mickey taken out of you a lot by the boys and the other men, like especially the older men, who think that young girls can't be apprentices and can't do the painting and decorating. My dad warned me, he said it's going to be hard because it's a man's job. They're proven wrong. <laughs> I would recommend similar engineering jobs to other women, but I'll say to them, They've got to be prepared to get a bit dirty and to do a bit of heavy work at times. I wish more women did do this job. I think it's um, tailor-made, really. Women are good at it and enjoy it. And there are lots and lots of different kinds of ways that you can get involved in the trade, you know, from working on a building site to work in a workshop, um, doing the kind of work that we do. Um, so, you know, there's lots of choice for all kinds of women. If one goes in at 16 or 18, one can get the craft experience, work up from craft level, then into site management, contract management, etc., which is the natural progression rather than coming in halfway through, which is what I did. A lot of the jobs that women are doing, you can't really get that much money for it. And it seems to me that, that, that most of the jobs that men do, you can at least in the long run, you can get a reasonable wage uh, to live on. And I wanted to to do something stable, to be able to look after myself.